the role of the SRE is to define to the engineering team how an application and how a service should be monitor how it should be observed what are the parameters should be let out what are the alerts should be let out what is the alert routing that should go their job is not to receive the alerts their job is to is to help the the engineering team take ownership of their service hi this is your host Soplin Bhartia and welcome to T3M our topic of this month the topic of this month is SRE and today we have with us once again Asavigal, co-founder and CTO of Logs.io. Asaf, it's great to have you on the show again. Hi, nice to be here again. Before we kind of deep dive into this topic, just let's quickly remind our viewers what is Logs.io all about. Uh, so Logs.io is an observability solution. Uh, we are uh, uh, providing kind of like based on an open source observability, but we actually complete it to be uh, more in line with how modern application is being developed, cloud-based, Kubernetes supported, um, and, uh, and all that uh, all that good stuff. We're focusing on the user experience. We're focusing on the ability to offer observability uh, at at a reasonable uh, at a reasonable cost with a lot of technology in order to ensure uh, uh, optimization and ensure that uh, you only store the right data uh, that you need. When they look at reliability and observability, are they and they complement each other, or they are like you know they are competing disciplines where you know teams are fighting. Hey, you know what? We are doing observability and you are doing reliability versus no. This is you know just you know a lot of things that overlap. Does the question make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. And I think there's definitely some level of overlap. And I think this is this is kind of like where we come in. I think a lot of the, the SREs or the site reliability engineers, uh, they see the world, uh, we, we kind of like call it in a horizontal way. They see the capacity being used. You see the Kubernetes cluster. They see the cloud utilization, but they don't see the impact of what they do on the applications. Uh, as opposed to that, the observability, which is more being looked from a development side and the business side, is seeing the is seeing the application. And like you rightfully said in the beginning, the whole goal of observability is I want to know if my application is serving my customers at the, at the service level that I agree to. And I don't care if what how many pods are being run on how many nodes it's being deployed. What are the cloud infrastructure underneath? I, I don't care about that because all I need to know is that I that I can deliver the service that I can. Uh, and, and I think this is kind of like where there is a little bit of a disconnect between the two of them. Uh, and there is slightly kind of like a merge that's coming out in the neck in the previous year and uh, and more to come. Um, so this is kind of like how we see it. You mentioned uh, uh, SLAs. We have started talking about SLOs as well, server level object too. Uh, talk a bit about uh, slight difference between the two and when we look at reliability or observability, once again, looking at businesses, what makes more sense? Just SLAs because, hey, you know what? We have fulfilled that versus SLOs. I think for a business, what makes more sense is the SLOs. So I have my, my, I have my objectives. And, and I think... Uh, a lot of companies, we see it, uh, they say that they do observability, what, what they do is just monitoring. Uh, and this is coming from the SRE world, this is coming from the DevOps engineer, it's not coming from the developer or the business. I think for a company and the way we see it, for in order to company to to kind of like migrate and uh, and make the transition to observability, they need to define SLOs. They need to, to build their observability system around their SLOs and they need to ensure that what they do uh, meets their service level objectives. This is the the, the only thing that they should care about. Uh, the unfortunately, a lot of companies, especially like in our domain, they come from the DevOps and the SRE, and they monitor everything. They monitor every single CPU of every node of every pod of every machine that they're running, and environments are getting very complex. Every memory utilization. And at the end of the day, uh, this results in, in a huge alert fatigue and they're not achieving the results. So how would I know if my CPU is spiking or my memory consumption is low or my pod is restarting if I'm hurting the business or not, which is the only thing I should care about. Uh, and what we're doing with companies is help them transition from that SRE, from a DevOps organization to an observability and SLO organization. And uh, and by doing that, we completely reduce their alert fatigue. 
uh, we're getting to be more stable uh, and and hopefully understand making them also understand the trade-offs between their environments, the cost, the security, uh, and the availability, which is kind of like a triangle that uh, that lives together. What are some other challenges that teams face, depending on how far they are in their observability or reliability journey? Because cloud native is complicated, complex, so many moving parts. It's, it's also tool and vendor sprawl is also there. There are so many, which is actually good. Diversification of technology is good, but it can become intimidating for users as well. So talk about the challenges that you see uh, customers often face. So obviously the, the main challenge is, is the alert fatigue and the mean time to resolution, what's being called MTTR, the mean time to resolve an issue. And we've seen using kind of like our survey that the, the, over the years, the mean time to resolution just growing and you would expect it to go down because there are more tools today that can address this and uh, and the industry is progressing. Uh, and, and I think a lot of it is is kind of like they go hand in hand because uh, companies define so many alerts and so many things that they shouldn't care about. I mean, the Kubernetes cluster is already addressing uh, restarts, already addressing scalability, already addressing a lot of the things that you should just let it let it do. Uh, you get to a point where you get alert fatigue. When you get alert fatigue, uh, you have a, a higher probability of missing the alerts that you actually care about, uh, as, as opposed to just like looking at these alerts and, and making sure that you uh, you address them at a at a timely manner. So I, I think uh, uh, this is where it starts. I think when you mentioned about the tools sprawl, it is an issue. Uh, but it's a solvable issue. And there are plenty of companies that we work with that use many, uh, several tools for observability. It's all okay as long as they have a unified data collection, as long as they're using open telemetry, they're using something that makes sure that the data is unified across all the platform. Because if I'm seeing an alert on my uh, uh, on my monitoring system for specific uh, uh, environment, I need to be able to find that service in my logs without trying to guess how is that service called there and what is it uh, uh, what does it do there. So, just the ability to do it is uh, is is really important, and it all starts from the data collection. Uh, without a proper strategy for data collection, uh, the the probability of setting up observability is uh, is really limited. Uh, and, and it's a problem. What is the scope? And once again, we look at the whole system. Where does security come into play? And what is also KubeCon is coming up? So I want to talk about it from the Kubernetes perspective as well. So obviously, uh, 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 Kubernetes is the, the adoption of Kubernetes is uh, is astonishing. It's 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 faster and higher than the adoption of cloud technology. So uh, uh, Kubernetes is, is being adopted. Uh, and not only Kubernetes, all the different flavors, whether it's uh, uh, Kubernetes running on managed, like an EKS or AKS, Kubernetes running on a managed with uh, with Fargate, with like a serverless uh, technology that's running Kubernetes. And there are a lot of flavors. It it does create a lot of flexibility, but wherever it, every time you create flexibility, you also create complexity. Uh, and the complexity is, to, is, is kind of like uh, showing itself when it comes to troubleshooting. When there is a problem and there is complexity, you actually increase the time it takes you uh, uh, to resolve. Uh, and, and I think I'll repeat it again, maybe what I what I said in the beginning of the call. There are two ways to look at the environment. One of them is to look at it horizontally. I want to see the service. I want to see kind of like my infrastructure. I want to see how my application is laid out on my infrastructure. That's the way, like if I want to see the cluster, the Kubernetes cluster, I want to see what are all the pods that are laying out on this, how the nodes are being balanced, how much it costs, and, and, uh, and kind of like how it operates. The second way is to look at it vertically. So I'm an application owner. I have a hundred different pods that are running on like five different clusters. And I want to see all the relationship between all of them because I want to see how they are performing. Uh, the way we see it, security kind of like plays into the, um, into both of these, uh, both of these teams, both from an infrastructure perspective. I want to make sure that what I'm deploying into my production environment is secure. Uh, and also as an application owner, a little bit less because as an application owner, my first and foremost uh, responsibility is for availability in my service level objective. But also if I have security, if I am introducing security vulnerabilities into the organization, I want to know about it so I can make a decision 
how how important it is and i am the only one who has the capability of of kind of like fixing it if this is what i do when it comes to let's just go back to sres within teams whose responsibility it is for monitoring of course alert fatigue is already there uh, because it's easy for us to say, hey, SRE teams are doing that. But in a lot of organizations, they don't have these kind of labels that you are a SRE team, you are this team, you are that team. So talk a bit about from realistic pers- perspective, what you're seeing, whose responsibility it is, what kind of cultural changes that are needed within organizations so that we are looking at things, whether it's security, whether it's reliability, whether it's observability, from a holistic perspective. I think a lot, some organizations that we see, they're having a hard time transitioning from the way they used to work to the new way. Someone reads an article of Google, how what is an SRE, and that he adopts whatever he adopts from the article, and that's it. Like They don't really go kind of like the full length, which is really important. The role of the SRE is to define the, to the engineering team, how an application and how a service should be monitored, how it should be observed, what are the parameters should be let out, what are the alerts should be let out, what is the alert routing that should go. Their job is not to receive the alerts. Their job is to to help the, the engineering team take ownership of their service. Now, some organization, they say they want to do it, but they're not there. Uh, and, and what happened is the, the good old developer development team and monitoring team, uh, and just, they call it a different name, but that's, that's the reality. And the, the monitoring team receives the alerts and they're supposed to address it and, and kind of like use the development team as a second line of, uh, of, of troubleshooting, uh, if you will. I think that the reality is that companies, if you look at, uh, uh Netflix and you look at Google and you look at all the other companies, the ownership of the quality of the service lies within the business, lies within the engineering, it lies within them. And the SRE team is is there to define what needs to be done. What are the best practices? What are the tools that are being used? How do you do data collection? So you can you have some level of consistency throughout your organization. Um, and, and I think we see it clearly of organizations that haven't transitioned, that they, they just like tell the story, but Basically, their SREs are good on monitoring people. They monitor every single metric that you have. They have alerts for some of them, and they have a playbook for some of them. But it, it's not just it's just not the way it's supposed to work, and it's not scalable as you go to hundreds and thousands of developers and different teams that are all sharing the same uh, the same environment. How do you folks make it easier for teams to navigate through some of these challenges? so that they can continue to focus on adding value to their businesses versus getting overwhelmed with all these complexities and challenges. Yeah, I think the way we do it is is we do offer them that two two ways of looking at, at their environment. One of them is for kind of like the SRE team was looking at, the, we have a Kubernetes 360, which you can look at the clusters and you can see all the information. You can see how applications are being laid out on them. Uh, and the second and the second view is a service level overview. So you can see each one of the services, how it's reacting, how it's communicating with the other. Is it secure? Uh, what's the level of uh, of uh, of if if you're meeting your service level objective for that service, and then then you can do it. So providing these two views to two different sets of people is is really helpful. And that's one way. The other way is is education. I think. Uh, uh, we've kind of like developed uh, our our own kind of like an observability. How you how, what's the well architected way of doing observability? Uh, and it has a lot of questions and a lot of guidance for for organization that they haven't thought about on on how to do. And we guide them through the path uh, because going from like monitoring to observability, it's not just like a simple thing. It's it's almost like a quantum leap. Uh, you have to you have to understand that it's a different ball game and it's a different culture and it's a different structure of organization it's different responsibility and uh and we help organizations through that uh transition i think a lot of organizations start their observability journey within open source the challenge with open source is it's limited uh we're talking about three different leaders in the open source world that each one of them does a segment but together they don't actually work well together so you look at um Login, which is dominated by open search. You look at the metrics, which is dominated by Prometheus. Um, you look at, uh, at uh, tracing, which is dominated by what used to be Jaeger, and now it's open telemetry. 
but each one of them has it's it's a project it's not an observability product it doesn't tie all the information together like we like we said in the beginning and what we do at Logs.io is we help organization that started their journey from an open source to transition to observability, both from an education, also in a product where we overlay the observability capabilities on top of the open source. And that's kind of like the unique thing of what we do. You're not losing anything you've done so far. You still have the same capabilities, but you have observability capabilities that are laid out on top of the uh, of the open source monitoring that that you used to have. Asaf, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about reliability, observability. And thanks for all those insights. And I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. 